Okay, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back uh, to the second part uh, of our webinar. Um, and uh, so I'd be glad to, to introduce also uh, with uh, my colleague, Susanna Rindertz. Uh, next slide. Oh, sorry, I have the hand on the slides here. Okay, um, <clears throat> so we, we are in this uh, framework of uh, the Climate Kick Carbon Farming Project. Uh, as uh, you may know, uh, the European Institute of Technology has developed a climate knowledge and innovation community that addresses uh, many aspects of transitions towards carbon neutrality and, car and climate change adaptation. And uh, in this project, uh, which is about carbon farming, more specifically, really the role of soils in carbon farming, we have three pillars that are closely interconnected. First one is about uh, options. So what are the options uh, for uh, the, um, no, sorry, can you stay in the scene? Yeah, so the first is about the options. So what sort of uh, technical options could we use uh, to uh, make progress vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the, uh, the carbon neutrality? Uh, the second one is about uh, the methods. So what methods can we bring in uh, to have this monitoring, reporting, verification of emissions and their changes uh, with uh, improved uh, practices in farming systems? And uh, as you see uh, here, we have traceability issues, but we have also some issues about certification and about uh, scaling mechanisms. Uh, this indeed involves uh, some uh, business models, involves uh, some industries, <clears throat> but also involves some policy regulations <clears throat> and support from finance <clears throat> and uh, de-risking. <clears throat> Next slide. Oh, sorry, I have to move it. Um, okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. So in uh, this uh, workshop, we present uh, the SCARF, which is uh, a network of initiatives, the uh, Soil Carbon Farming Network, uh, which is uh, developed within this uh, carbon farming uh, project. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> And it is important to note that uh, <clears throat> we see the emergence of uh, voluntary carbon markets that are new markets that can support this transition towards low carbon in farming systems. And uh, this uh, needs to be supported by farmers, uh, by uh, the uh, industries. And it is uh, also clearly an opportunity uh, to have payments for ecosystem services, and in this case, uh, payments for carbon. So we, we have to uh, think about what is required in such projects and uh, for certification, you need to have uh, additional uh, so carbon storage compared to baseline. Uh, we need to measure and verify the amount of CO2 that is uh, avoided or that is stored. And uh, also, uh, and this was well explained this morning, uh, it is important uh, that governments are involved to guarantee the uniqueness of the carbon credits. So you should not have uh, the same carbon credits registered in uh, different initiatives and paid uh, in different ways. So uh, this uh, requires transparency and uh, verification of the uh, sequestered or avoided CO2 emissions. So we, we focus in our project on the role of soil carbon, but uh, indeed we look into uh, the full effect here with the uh, greenhouse gas balance involving uh, the uh, nitrous oxide and methane emissions also. Next slide. Um, so the, the price of the carbon credits uh, uh, will vary and uh, there are different ways uh, to pay uh, for carbon credits. Uh, and uh, you see that the average price currently uh, is in Europe around uh, uh, 13 euros per ton CO2 equivalent, uh, with a huge variation, in fact, between 6 and 110 uh, euro per ton CO2 equivalents. 
And uh, this is higher than the global average, which is around six euro per ton of CO2 equivalents on the international markets. Here again with large variation. So clearly, uh, uh, the, one of the critical questions will be how will those prices evolve over time? Understanding that uh, there is a big push for getting higher CO2 prices, uh, given the need to have a rapid abatement of emissions. Uh, so we, we do expect that the price will rise, but how far, how will it be uh, in Europe compared to international is something which is not uh, fully known. Next slide. <clears throat> so uh, with that brief introduction, uh, I'm really glad to uh, uh, introduce the next presentations. Uh, and the first one will be by uh, Mathieu uh, from uh, INRAE about the business models. Then we will uh, hear about uh, the French Ministry uh, for Agriculture and Food. Uh, and this will be about uh, the role of public funding. And then we will take a range of uh, experimentations really that uh, involve a specific business model. Uh, we will hear from uh, Jean-Pierre Renault about the uh, Live Life Hoods uh, Fund. Uh, which has funded a range uh, of uh, initiatives uh, of uh, experimentations, especially in developing countries. Uh, we will hear uh, from uh, Jean-Baptiste Delay about, uh, from Institut de l'Elevage, about uh, the France Carbon Agri Association, uh, which, is, uh, which has a methodology uh, for livestock, uh, which is uh, one of the first recognized methodologies in France. Uh, we will hear from uh, Michael Heyman, uh, who is the CEO of uh, Natais, a uh, private uh, company uh, that is uh, developing uh, its uh, scheme for uh, low carbon uh, with uh, the, uh, the supply chain and with farmers. And uh, we will also hear about uh, McDonald's Friends uh, initiative uh, with their supply chain. Uh, so uh, with this, uh, thank you. And uh, I think I hand it to you, uh, Mathieu. Thank you. So, let's go with my presentation today. So, just a minute. Thank you. It's a great presentation today. The different business models for carbon storage. So, the emissions are these business models, and then both farmers, agriculturists, oilers, cooking for you, and so on. And then, we start with the farming companies. In order to generate carbon credits, it is necessary. As the practices used by this project are violated by the ladder. Mathieu, je crois qu'on n'entend pas en fait. Sorry. Je, je crois qu'on n'entend pas, Mathieu. C'est comme si tu étais très très loin de, 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 du microphone. Est-ce que c'est mieux comme ça? Oui. D'accord. Uh, in order to generate carbon credits, it is necessary that the practices used by projects are valuable labels, such as label by carbon, gold standard, or VCS, or by method developed by a company. Uh, it also requires that there is a system in place to measure and verify the carbon in the soil, and that the store carbon is verified by an external audit. This credit will then be sold to companies or citizens that wish to voluntarily offset their emission. Uh, next slide, please. So here you can see um, uh, the studies that we've done, we have done for ADEM. So uh, ADEM is the French Environmental and Energy Management Agency. So if you are interested by the subject I will uh, explain today, you can download it at the link you see on the screen and uh, an English version that will be available soon. Next slide, please. So what you can see here is the usual agricultural production chain from the farmer to the consumer. Uh, farmers that have carbon storing practices can enter into a partnership with an aggregator. Uh, this way, all the credits that are generated by the farmer can be grouped together and sold to one or several barriers who wish to voluntarily offset their emission. Uh, the aggregator may be an association, a company, a cooperative, and we'll see example of aggregators today after this presentation. Uh, one of the advantages of this model is to transfer the administrative marketing and sale work from the farmers to the aggregator. And it can also be very useful to reduce the measuring, reporting, and verification costs for farmers 
by sampling only several form, forms, forms per, per project. And uh, one of the risks that may exist in this model is the capture value by these aggregators. And it is necessary, necessary to ensure uh, that the value generated by farmers is not fully transferred to this organization. Next slide. So here I took the here I took the France Carbon Agri Association. So it's an important example to consider as it is the first French player whose carbon agri methodology was certified by the Ministry of Ecological Transition for the level of carbon on September 2019. And the France Carbon Agri Association will therefore be among the first to receive carbon credits through the, the French level. So uh, as an aggregator, as they have several missions and they help at several levels. For example, they launch already two calls for projects uh, that group together farmers that want to decrease their emission or to store carbon in the soil. And they also help uh, administratively and commercially uh, the, the farmers to, to sell the carbon credits that will be emitted. They, uh, so they look for funders and they also help to 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 further the, the contractualization contractualization between farmers uh, project holders uh, this association and carbon credit buyers and finally uh, at different stage of the project they provide financial rewards to farmers depending on the number of carbon credits uh, that have been stored uh, next slide please so platform are a specific kind of aggregators as they are private companies that constitute new marketplace for the sale of voluntary carbon credits. Uh, in this type of model, farmer starts by applying on the platform website to present the emission reduction or carbon storage project when it's uh, validated by the, by the platform and when the farmers stored carbon in the soil, it's validated by the third party. And after that, uh, people can buy uh, carbon credits on their website. Uh, what is interesting about platform is that citizens and company can easily pay on this marketplace for the number of tons of carbon storage they wish to finance. Uh, there are several um, examples of such platforms, such as Indigo Ag, Nori, or Soil Capital, as uh, I will present a little more uh, at the next slide. So Soil Capital is a growing European platform. It is an independent company launched in 2020 that offers support to French and Belgian farmers wishing to capitalize on the carbon storage. It is a platform that allows farmers to apply directly on their website and they provide uh, an economical and uh, a commercial and agronomic support uh, to this farm. Uh, it, the fact that it is a platform makes it easy for farmers uh, to access carbon violation. So when the farmers uh, put in place different kinds of practices like a minimum on tillage, establishment of plant cover, diversification, or organic fertilization. Uh, once it is done, they, they are able to, to help with the uh, uh, verification of carbon credits. Uh, to, um, their method meets the standards ISO 14064, uh, 14, uh, and the verification of carbon storage is used uh, the cool farm tool uh, and the credits are sold by South Pole. So we can see it can involve several partners uh, to, to help with uh, the commercialization of uh, and the sale of uh, credits. And next slide. So in the case of carbon storage financing by an agribusiness company in its value chain, the carbon credits generated by farmers are contractually transferred to the same companies that already buy as uh, farmers their products. So the food processing company here uh, has a dual role of food processor and aggregator. So in this case, the food processing company can decide to not sell the carbon credits in order to decrease their scope three emissions, or they can also uh, sell uh, these carbon credits. And next slide. 
So here it's another example that doesn't involve directly carbon credits. So EcoTree is another example of uh, uh, a business model where uh, citizen can finance uh, carbon storage projects. So it's a French startup uh, and uh, an investment fund for individuals and companies, where the customer can buy trees individually or through a monthly subscription. And after that, they become tree owner. Uh, Ecotree is responsible uh, for the purchase of the land and they have to sustainably manage the, the forests. Uh, and clients are paid when the tree uh, when the trees reach maturity and when the wood is sold through uh, uh, calls for tender, the wood is being destined to become timber. So the promotion of store carbon seems to be a relevant selling point for this company, which already has uh, 30,000 private individuals and 500 companies as customer. Uh, next slide. Uh, several recommendations came out of, of our study. So there is a need to support investment in equipment and good necessary for the implementation of new carbon storing practices. Uh, for example, for the sowing of plant cover, for the sowing uh, undercover, and for species uh, diversification, for example. Uh, also, to make this project benefit from the complementary of voluntary carbon market uh, with public subsidy, as it is the case with the low carbon level, and you will get more information on this, uh, on how this can be done uh, through the next presentation uh, of NAIS. Uh, it will be also interesting to analyze the economic added value of labels attesting to the mode of production of agricultural and food products. It could constitute and be complementary to other remuneration strategies. Um, there is also a need to, to develop a risk calculation and sharing mechanism so that the risk incurred and not just carried by farmers. And this could be done by uh, insurance companies. Uh, there is also a need to use scientifically validated methods that can confirm the amount of carbon stored in the soil. And uh, in, in order to avoid that credits are sold uh, without um, being uh, actually uh, stored. Uh, and, and last, uh, we would like to strongly encourage the continuation of stocking practices for long-term contracts and significant discounts in case of interruption. So thank you for your next slide. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mathieu. Uh, we'll now go to um, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture. Thank you, Anaïs, for taking the, 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 the word. So it's your turn. Um, and Jessica will show your slides. Okay, thank you. For, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Anaïs Valence. Uh, ca can you put the next slide? Uh, so so I, I'm Anaïs Valence. I'm working at the French Ministry of Agriculture. And uh, I will focus my presentation on the contribution of public funding in the carbon certification. Yeah. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yeah, thank you. So the goal of this presentation is to detail the condition for the development of the label by carbon and the place of the public sector in this environment. Um, so private invest investors in agricultural supply chain and outside show great interest in the label by carbon and the label is primarily designed for the use. Um, public funding is used in particular at the launching phase of the, of the label to first encourage uh, the, de the development of new label by carbon methodologies. Uh, then to support also the first step of farmers who want to join the label by carbon, as we will see after uh, with, uh, with a focus on, the, on one of the measures of the French recovery plant. And, um, and then for public funding is used also to formulate the strategy for the development of uh, such tools in the agricultural sector. But overall, the role of the public sector is, is uh, mostly to create the, regu the regulatory frameworks for the label by carbon itself, as we already explained this morning uh, with the presentation of, uh, of Julien. 
to, to answer the, co the coherence with the, with the CAP and also to increase climate ambitions. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the development of methodology is mainly supported by the private sector itself, by the farmers or supply chain organizations, but public funding is sometimes needed to help the emergence of some methodologies to cover all the production system. So this was the case for the livestock methodology with use European funding. Uh, life project in this case. The, tab the table presents the state of play in the development of methodologies on the sector covered. This was already presented by Julien this morning, so I will not go deeper in the presentations, but we can see that since um, 2018, on the creation of the la French label by carbon, more and more uh, methodologies are developed in the way to cover, um, in the end, all the, the agricultural products. Next slide, please. So at the, at the launching phase of the carbon certification, public funding can also support the first step of farmers who want to join in the label by carbon by financing the initial farm assessments so that financial support, uh, the carbon assessment chain, is a part of the French recovery plans. So just um, a brief overview of, um, of the French recovery plans. So on the slide, you can see that the recovery plans uh, was announced by the French government on the 3 September 2020, include an important part dedicated to agricultural, food and forestry transitions as uh, 1.2 billion of euros are dedicated to this support. Um, next slide, please. Here we can see uh, the budget repartitions dedicated to the agricultural sector in the recovery, recovery, recovery plants. Um, so a part of the budget is uh, dedicated to adapt Forest to climate change to better mitigate, another part to one world um, of agricultural equipment to engage farmers in agroecology and adapt their farm to climate change. Uh, another part of the budget is to improve uh, stock farming, updating, health security, animal welfare. Another part to national strategy on vegetable prote protein. And uh, last but not least, uh, 4, 000, uh, 400 million of euros are dedicated to accelerate the agroecological transition to provide healthy, safety, sustainable, local, and quality food for everyone. So the carbon assessment chain, uh, the measure of the, of the French recovery plants, is included in, uh, in this orientation. Uh, next slide, please. The carbon assessment uh, shame uh, measure of the recovery plants gets a dedicated budget of 10 million of euros. Um, its objective uh, is to encourage young farmers to reduce their GHG emission to, and, um, and to develop carbon storage, taking into account climate adaptation and the farm business plans. Um, the financial rate is of 90%. That represents um, a cost for the farmers around 200, 250 euros. Mm -hmm. the, the target uh, by, this, um, by this financial support is, um, is to achieve in two years to deliver 4,500 carbon assessment chains. Uh, that uh, represents around 7% of uh, national uh, young farmers' population. So for this measure, the recovery plant uh, funding provides public support to make a first step toward agroecology and increase the development of private carbon compensation funding based on the label by carbon. Next slide, please. 
the content of the carbon assessment chain is divided in three main parts spread over time. Uh, first, uh, diagnosis to assess GHG reductions and carbon storage potential, and uh, an optional detailed assessment on soil, including soil analysis and agropedological advice. Uh, then, uh, an action plan describing levels for improvements over 15 years period, funding available for implementation and monitoring indicators. Um, the, this action plan is based on the validated method of the label by carbon, if they are existing. Um, this action plan, this action plan um, is um, taking into account also analysis of vulnerability and adaptation to climate change. And uh, these plans must conduct a technical and economic analysis of su suggested options in connection to with the farm business plant. Uh, around six months after this uh, two steps, uh, tailor made support to facilitate farmers' implementation of their action plans is well is realized. Uh, next slide. So in, um, in practice, um, the implementation of the carbon assessment same measure uh, begin by a call for project launched to identify service providers who will carry out farm assessments. Uh, this call of project ended on the 29 January uh, and uh, 40, 58 service providers get selected. Uh, by the Agency of uh, Ecological Transitions, ADEM, and the French Ministries. Uh, These um, service providers will be in charge of delivering uh, around 4,500 uh, 4, carbon assessment chain over two years. Uh, they will cover a large part of sectors, donc, like Arab crops, mixed production systems, livestock breeding, mainly for ruminants and pig, but also other supply chain like viticulture, fruit and vegetables. So a wide diversity of service providers, advisor structure, cooperative and other operators uh, were selected. And they are beginning now until the end of 2022. Next slide, please. So on this slide, you will find some link if you go to go further in the French recovery plan. Next slide, please. Uh, the ministry have also a role to play in supporting the development of the label by designing a strategy for the development of compensation scheme in the agricultural sector. The French Ministry of Agriculture has just launched a study to carry out an inventory of, exist, of the existing ch chain to promote climate change mitigation effort in agriculture and to dwarf the development prospects of this, of this scheme by paying attention to the possible diversification of agricultural income. So this study will in particular offer an in-depth analysis of existing experiences analysis of strength, weakness, opportunity, and threats in France, but also from international practices. And uh, the study will also propose, uh, after that, a concrete recommendation for a quick development of the, of the scheme in France by identifying the, the levers to be used. Um, the results of this study will be used for the development of a strategy for the large-scale development of scheme and mechanism to promote climate change mitigation effort in the agricultural sector in France. First result will be expected uh, before the summer in the full report in late October. Next slide, please. Um, so we saw that public sector get a role at the launching phase for carbon certific certification, 
But overall, the role of public sector is mostly to create uh, regulatory frameworks. As you know, the new green architecture of the CAP will propose an architecture with two major change. The merging of the greening and, and, and the cross compliance in, a, in an ancient cross compliance. And uh, the other uh, major change is the creation of a new instrument under Pillar 1, the Eco Scheme, that would allow payment for ecosystem services. Next slide, please. Uh, on another hand, as explained uh, this morning, additionality is assessed in the label uh, by carbon relatively to a baseline scenario determined determine in, the, in the method. So only emission reductions that go beyond the baseline scenario are recognized. The new cap raise the issue of the new baseline scenario as new regulatory requirements and new incentive will be put in place. This, su this subject is still under discussion as the reference and national regulations are not yet finalized, but uh, the label will have to adapt uh, of these uh, new regulations. Next slide, please. Uh, Last but not least, uh, the public sector gets also a role to establish regulatory frameworks increasing climate ambitions. The French climate law under discussions introduced is in its article 38 an obligation for airlines to compensate GLG emissions for all domestic flights. This first objective is to decrease emissions related to domestic flights. But in, in addition, it's introduced obligation for compensation of the residual, residual traffic. The objective is to have these compensations implemented in France and Europe preferentially. First, the demand for schemes such as the, the French Label by Carbon may therefore significantly increase in France in the coming years. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anaïs. Um, I will leave the floor now to Jean-Pierre Renaud from Livelihood Funds. So um, Jean-Pierre, the turn is yours. Thank you and uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm very uh, happy to be to be with you. On behalf of the Livelywood Funds, I'm Jean-Pierre Reynaud. I'm the co-founder of the Livelywood, uh, Livelywood Venture. Do you hear me? Quite good. Is it okay? Yes? Yes, it's perfect. Okay. So, uh, shortly, the Livelywood Fund, is, we are not buyer. We are not seller of carbon credits. We are, in fact, project implement, uh, implementer for life. That's, it's written here. And uh, so, our business model which is now uh, 12 years old, uh, is based on the fi on, on, of financing the whole transformation, the whole cost of transformation uh, of an ecosystem for, for life of communities. Uh, I mean, uh, including, uh, we are speaking about diagnost diagnostic, uh, but also activities, risk, everything which is needed to make it happen is uh, financed by the livelihood fund and the return is based on carbon credit generated by the ecosystem itself. It's a forest. It's uh, the carbon coming from the sequestration of carbon in the in the trees. But we are also working, and especially here for for for, for today on agriculture, and concerning the sequestration of carbon in the soil. Uh, Fifteen companies are, are uh, uh, involved in the in the fund. Big companies such as. Danone, Mars, uh, the French Post, uh, uh, Michelin. Uh, so I, I will forget the others. Sorry. And so these are projects. These are high scale projects. We are. We are. I, I, I give you some figures concerning the two first funds which are now uh, running, and uh, the the minimum uh, size of a project is about six. Uh, 6,000 to 10,000 hectares uh, involving especially small farmers, 
in the in these projects. And so for the moment, something like 19 projects are running all over the world. This is uh, definitively in accordance with the carbon international regulation and, and especially the, the voluntary market, such, such as uh, uh, Vera or Gold Standard Foundation. And uh, we are here because um, we saw that our model was definitively 100% financed by the carbon economics based on the value on, and the cost, which has been shown by uh, Jean-Francois. This is possible to create a balance between the investment which is needed and the, uh, the return on carbon credits. And we saw that it was really difficult to do the same, especially in France, because the cost itself is, uh, is different. But we wanted to uh, find a, a model, uh, a specific model, to make sure that it's possible not only to, to help uh, the restoration of ecosystem on the developing countries, but also in our, in our countries, which needs, as it, it has been described during the, the, the first presentation, which is really needed. And so for that reason, we have launched a first project in Brittany. Please, could, could you uh, switch to the next slide, please? So uh, the, the idea is uh, to, uh, to see what is possible to, to see in France. And we, we are convinced, especially convinced, that soil is the base of the pyramid. If we have an healthy soil, for sure, this healthy soil will create healthy condition for people, which create also healthy condition for the territory. So as you see in this, uh, in this slide, this is like a, um, a, a, a virtuous circle to, uh, to, 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 to restart from the soil. And as you know, and it has been described also, soil is, we are all, always uh, thinking that forest is the most important carbon sequestrator uh, system. Uh, the initiative, the four, four uh, quatre pour mille initiative, so that the soil is definitely the, the most important or quite the most important. So we, we said, what, what is the model and how can we drive a model uh, which is compliant not only with one type of agriculture or another? So we are focused on saying, okay, healthy soil must generate it must generate new project. And when we are speaking about healthy soil, we are thinking about three main activities, which are first, the tillage, going de de progressively to no tillage, the cover crops, and to make sure that we can maintain a cover for the whole year, rip, uh, con the, the, the concern, uh, uh, even if there are different crops during the year, and also this diversifying the, the rotation of crops, which is close to what is called in France the agriculture de conservation, but it has been done, it can be done in other type of agriculture. Could you switch to the next slide, please? So it was, uh, you say, difficult because we saw that this kind of model needs investment need money which is not compliant with an 100 percent financing system by the carbon if we are taking in account the market as it is today maybe in some other year it will change but for the moment this is the reality and uh, also to see how it, it is it possible to create an organization able to launch a project in such uh, situation, because I think this is something that we have to take in account. When we are launching a project in the developing country, there is, or the organization, national, local organization, which are existing, are not so powerful to mobilize a, 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 most, a, more, a more important part of the farmers. And we saw that most of the time, NGO are the best Implement, uh, implementer, but because in a country they are able to uh, uh, practice or to, to mo mobilize the people to uh, act, the, 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 to, 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 to follow the activities, to train the people, to be in accordance with the, the state and the people themselves. So 
this is in one body, it's possible to create the whole process able to generate the transformation. In France, we saw that is not possible. It is necessary to implement different activities, such as uh, uh, association d'agriculteurs, such as uh, chambre d'agriculture, uh, farmers for sure. So first of all, we, we found in Brittany an unprecedented star alignment, as we say, to commit them, to commit the people, to commit the farmers, to commit the, the local authorities, to commit the, the agriculture association to make this project. Could you switch to the next slide, please? So this, this motivation uh, is also interesting to, to, to focus on because some farmers had already started this implementation long time ago, long time, 20 years ago. But this is difficult. There is a risk. Some, some people fail. So we, we make, in fact, this uh, challenge to say, OK, how can we create a mix between, I would say, pioneer farmers and new farmers who wanted to, uh, uh, to transform their farm? And we, we, as a livelihood, we said, and we will help you on the wall steps to make it happen. Wall step means training, means risk, uh, uh, sharing the risk, and also uh, monitoring the project. And as you see, this, is a, this, this has started now, and we are covering the whole part of the, the Brittany activities with something like 100 farmers for the moment. Could you switch to the other one, please? So I need to go uh, <laughs> faster. And uh, as you see, we uh, this uh, this uh, we saw that most or the most important part of the carbon is based on the uh, carbon in the soil. So that's the reason why we are focused on that, and we we commit the farmers through contracts, such as it is done in the MAEC, as you as you know probably in France to make sure that these practices will be done in a way which will be successful. And these practices will be also the basis of the monitoring of the project. And we uh, have started to work with the Label by Carbon, but also with the international regulation to see how, uh, how to transform and how to translate these practices into carbon benefits. Could you go on the next slide, please? What is also important to say is not only a question of carbon, it's a question of healthy soil. So that's the reason why we decided to have different indicators, as you will see on the uh, right part of this, uh, this uh, slide, uh, including uh, water retention, including uh, uh, fuel consumption, including, including worms, uh, including biodiversity, because as you know, the most important part of the biodiversity is not coming from the air, but it's coming from the soil. So that's for us very important to mix, in fact, the monitoring of the practices translating carbon, but also monitoring the practices translating all this uh, uh, environment component. Could you switch to the other one, please? For doing that and to solve the equation of the cost itself, we have decided to launch the, the first project in this way, mixing uh, uh, public funding and also uh, you say private funding, 50% coming from public through the, the, the region de Bretagne and 50% uh, coming from the livelihood, the livelihood fund. And as you see, this system is based on the, on the implementation by the Chamber d'Agriculture and a uh, farm organization in, involving for the moment uh, 100 growers. Okay, next, uh, next slide. Next slide, please. Oh, that's, that's all. Sorry uh, that uh, to, be, to be short, but I invite you to, first of all, 
to ask questions if you if you need, and also uh, to to visit the project in Brittany when uh, it's possible for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean Jean Pierre. Jean-Pierre. Um, so now we have a first question and, and answer uh, session. So Mathieu will, will lead that. Uh, yes, Jean-Pierre, there is a question for you. Uh, could you specify what are the difference for you between regenerative agriculture and conservation agriculture, please? That's a, that's a good point. Um, this is uh, regenerative uh, agriculture is a term coming from uh, uh, English people, especially, but the agriculture conservation and agriculture regenerative is quite the same, uh, the same um, uh, uh, aspect. But we decided to label this project agriculture regenerative because it's not only a question of conservating the soil itself, but it's also to regenerate the soil to make it uh, healthy, as I said and to make sure that we can restart the, the agriculture or in, uh, improving the agriculture to make sure the efficiency, the, the yield, the, the biodiversity is regenerated. So that's the reason why we decided to uh, use this, this term. Okay. Thank you, Jean-Pierre. Uh, there is another question for the ministry. Uh, how do you think the label of carbon can go along with uh, the cap to help uh, the farmers to get uh, subsidies and, and money for implementing good practices. Um, I, I don't really understand the, the question. Perhaps Valentin, could you could you explain uh, or reformulate the, the question? Now you, you can stitch. Okay. Uh, yes, thanks, Anais. Yes, well, uh, uh, I mean, in principle, uh, eco scheme or uh, agro and environmental and climatic uh, measures money uh, is supposed, as you've shown, to to uh, to uh, to pay for additional practices, not business as usual. So, since this is exactly the principle of label by carbon, one would think that. Uh, uh, naively, maybe, but uh, that 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 the good way to allocate uh, this uh, this money to additional practices would be to to alloc to to make it conditional to uh, labelization by uh, label by carbon. So maybe the label is too young, but uh, I was wondering is this was being considered at least uh, say in five year times for the next uh, uh, CAP uh, national strategic plan? Uh, is it clear? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not clear, but it's. Uh, I didn't get all the key to, to answer of this, uh, of this question because uh, the cap is uh, in um, in negotiation. So uh, um, yeah, I, I I don't have uh, uh, a uh, element to, to answer. Maybe, no, sorry, um, maybe a few elements uh, if you if you enable me to, to speak a little bit. Uh, and I, Sébastien Bouvatier, I'm also from the French Ministry of Agriculture. Um, just a few, um, just to answer this question is, it, it, we, we, we did consider this uh, option, uh, in fact, but uh, the truth is that um, it wasn't that easy to directly introduce the LBC inside our CAP environment, mainly due to um, management procedures. And mainly, I mean, I mean it, the, the main question was whether we could uh, introduce the LBC inside the eco scheme. Uh, but you know, the eco scheme is part of a pillar one uh, of the cap. And so it's, uh, I mean, you've got yearly payments. And so it wasn't really uh, easy to make the LBC, which is based on like generally five years, uh, fit in this uh, management rules that we have uh, for yearly payments. And so that was one, one, one answer. And, but um, as, as when I said, it's that it's, it's not, uh, we cannot directly uh, make a link between uh, eco scheme and uh, LBC, but uh, we did identify a few um, pract agricultural practices, which uh, are clearly um, 
part of the, the, the practices which are introduced in uh, uh, LBC methods. And they, those, those practices uh, uh, which have a positive impact on uh, climate, uh, they will be part of uh, what is under consideration uh, for the definition of our eco schemes. And, and that's why, as uh, Anna said, there will be an impact of uh, the definition of the eco schemes on the baseline scenarios for the different uh, LBC methodologies, and, uh, and 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 it will move. Um, so so there is a link, but uh, not a direct link for those uh, management consideration that uh, I've uh, explained before. I know it's if I is it clear? Yeah, it's it's it, it's perfectly clear. Thank you, Sebastian. There is another question about uh, how, what does the have, where does this revenue come from? And what does it mean that this project are how they for? Sorry, Mathieu, I didn't uh, hear the question. Uh, uh, how does the group pay for revenue from this project? And how, how does it work? Could you write it because uh, I don't I don't hear your question. Sorry, uh, uh, um, the question was, uh, what does that mean the revenue, uh, how do you, does that mean the revenue on this project? Okay, so this, uh, this is a model based on the, uh, you know, a, an upfront investment. As I said, we are investing, so we are paying everything which is needed to make it happen. For example, if if the, the organization needs, the organization and the farmers need training, need material, uh, need, uh, for example, in some projects such as, such as forest project, you, you need nurseries and so on. Everything which is needed to, uh, to, to make sure that it will happen is paid by livelihoods. And we don't ask nothing except the carbon credit which are generated by this transformation. This is our way to have a, a return. But everything which is coming from the project itself, I mean, food, uh, everything belongs to the farmers, belongs to the people. We don't ask anything else. So this model is an upfront investment model. We don't pay the carbon we pay the investment and ask the carbon as a return. Is it clear? Yes, thank you, Dr. Espat, it's clear. Okay, if there are no further questions, I would suggest we go to the presentation from Jean-Baptiste Dolé from IDA with the France Carbon Agri Association. Thank you very much, uh, um, Jean-Baptiste, for, for starting your talk. Uh, good afternoon. So um, I am Jean-Baptiste Dolé from the French Livestock Institute. Uh, the French Livestock Institute is developing methodologies and tools to uh, assess uh, environmental burdens in, in farms. And we are supporting uh, mitigation strategies for the different uh, livestock production in France. And I work also for France Carbon Agri Association. And I will present the association created uh, in uh, two years ago by farmers for uh, supporting the implementation of carbon farming project. So um, in the next slide, uh, you have here uh, an overview of uh, the carbon agri uh, concept. So this is a result-based methodology uh, applied during five years. Uh, and so you have here the six uh, steps. So the first one uh, consists in uh, defining baseline with the first audit. 
and we will come back on this first audit with uh, the objective for uh, building a mitigation action plan with uh, farmers. Uh, mitigation action plan, they will apply uh, during five years. And uh, following these five years, we will do a second audit for uh, quantifying the CO2 reduction. And uh, following this quantification, we are able for uh, verifying and certifying the carbon reduction in order uh, to rewarding farmers for uh, reducing their greenhouse gas emissions or for increasing the, the carbon sequestration. Next slide. And uh, the first step, so, uh, consists in uh, making the reference, uh, evaluating the baseline. And in France, uh, we use uh, the Capture tool. So this is an environmental footprint calculator and the decision making. The objective of this tool is to assess uh, uh, mixed uh, crops and livestock production system. And we use uh, methodology IPCC tier two and tier three. And uh, the methodology is in accordance with the main guidelines uh, produced by uh, IDF, so the International Dairy Federation, and uh, guidelines from FAO also. And uh, to make sure this methodology is following the standards, uh, we ask for a certification and we obtained the certification by EcoCert in 2015. And so the methodology is a life cycle assessment. So we are considering uh, the carbon, uh, di carbon dioxide from inputs. And we also consider so methane and nitrous oxide associated to uh, manure management, uh, crops management, and herb management in order to determine the carbon intensity of products uh, produced in farms in a kilo of CO2 per kilo of product or per hectare. And uh, on the same farms with the same tool, we uh, evaluate also uh, the carbon sequestration thanks to additional practices. And we will have a look now uh, on, on these practices in order to quantify the carbon sequestration in kilo of carbon on, or in kilo of carbon dioxide. Next slide. We uh, launched this uh, initiative in uh, 2012, uh, 2013. Uh, and so we have now a large sample of farms uh, involved. We have now uh, 15,000 farms involved in the low carbon initiative in France. And thanks to the large sample, we identified 40 mitigation practices we can suggest to farmers. And you have here an overview of the different mitigation practices. Uh, some of them uh, permit to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by reducing the quantity of inputs, for instance, uh, the quantity of concentrate or, or fertilizer. We can improve the herd management by reducing the number of unproductive animals. We can reduce also fuel and electricity consumption in farms. And we can work on feed efficiency, uh, fertilization. We can reduce the fertilization by uh, developing legume for the crops. And we can also reduce methane and nitrous oxide emissions from manure management. And on the other side, we uh, suggest the farmer to increase, to, to maintain the, the carbon store in the soil and to increase the carbon sequestration. Uh, thanks to cover crops, we can avoid basal, we can develop uh, agroforestry in France, and we have different practices to improve grassland management. So temporary and uh, permanent uh, grassland. Next slide. And uh, after doing the first audit, after applying the mitigation practices during five years uh, by farmers, so we are able to quantify the CO2 reduction. And so the second audit is also a whole farm assessment. So this is really important because we, we have to avoid uh, impacts uh, transferred between uh, different production units in, in farms. We can, we can produce uh, crops, we can have uh, a dairy unit, a beef unit. And so this is really important to, to do a whole farm assessment. And uh, generally, uh, farmers uh, apply three to four mitigation practices, uh, which represent a carbon reduction from 15 to 20%. And you have here uh, the main practices uh, retained by farmers, applied by farmers, which concern uh, landscape and crops in relation with uh, a greenhouse gas reduction and carbon sequestration. We can work on the feeding strategy, uh, energy and manure management and earth management. 
And so uh, we, uh, we look at uh, these uh, mitigation practices. Some of them are cost effective. And so the cost is null. And we have some mitigation practices which represent an extra cost. And so uh, in funds involved in this project, we can say now that the implementation cost is in the range from zero to uh, 100 euro per ton of CO2 avoided in these funds. Next slide. And yes, uh, second aspect, uh, we, we have a look on the carbon uh, assessment, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, carbon sequestration, but it is really important and so also to monitor uh, the over environmental co-benefits. And it's why uh, the capture tool uh, is also calculating the contribution to biodiversity. Uh, we evaluate uh, the ammonia emissions. And so between two audits, the reduction in ammonia emissions the nitrogen balance in relation with water quality, uh, so the energy consumption, but also the production of renewable energy, and also the link with the deforestation. The objective is to reduce uh, the consumption uh, of soya bean. And uh, in, relative, uh, in relation with the previous presentation, uh, some indicators in link with regenerative agriculture, uh, like uh, catch crops area, for instance. And next slide, when uh, we uh, quantify the CO2 reduction, when we evaluate the uh, environmental co-benefits, we are able to verify and after to certify the CO2 reduction. And uh, the objective of the carbon agri methodology consists in uh, ask for an external auditor to uh, verify the CO2 avoided. And so we ask to uh, Veritas uh, for uh, doing this verification. So this is an external auditor. This is very really important to be transparent uh, on the calculation of the CO2 avoided to, um, to, to, uh, to present also the mitigation practices applied in this farm. And following this verification process, we ask for the certification by the French Ministry of uh, Environment. And so we are able to quantify between the baseline scenario and the project scenario, the total quantity of CO2 avoided during the uh, crediting period. Next slide. And uh, following the certification, we can proceed to the result-based payment for farmers. So the objective is to uh, fund, fund farmers uh, thanks to the CO2 uh, avoided. And uh, in the farms uh, involved, uh, we uh, have a reduction of CO2 in a range of, uh, uh, in an average quantity of 400 tons of carbon avoided per farm during five years. And uh, we have in France a uh, demand in a carbon offsetting or in supporting low carbon project in France ag from agriculture. And so we have public and uh, private entities who want to uh, purchase carbon avoided in agriculture. And so we have some contracts with uh, these uh, entities from public and, uh, and private entities. And uh, we are able to reward farmers for their effort uh, done in applying the mitigation practices. And in parallel, uh, we have also public and private fundings for supporting audits in farms and uh, monitoring and reporting and verification costs. This is the case with the Ministry of Agriculture uh, we, we saw with in the previous presentation. We have some funds also from regional council, and there is also some agri-food companies who want to support, to fund farmers for uh, their audit, as a carbon audit, and for building the mitigation action plan. And so there is a mix between private and public fundings for uh, putting into practice uh, this uh, carbon strategy. Next slide. For uh, facilitating the implementation of uh, these uh, strategies and for uh, facilitating the implementation of the carbon agri methodology, uh, Farmers Association created uh, two years ago uh, France, Car France Carbon Agri Association. So uh, France Carbon Agri Association is a national aggregator for carbon offset projects. And so we, uh, France Carbon Agri Association is working with project uh, leader, a project developer. So project developer, uh, we have some uh, producer association, uh, advice company, 
who uh, will support farmers for uh, doing the audit, the carbon audit, and for building the mitigation action plan. And thanks for the different uh, project, we are able to uh, submit uh, a high project to the French Ministry of uh, Environment for uh, certifying the reduction. And you have here on the left, on the right, sorry, uh, the first project uh, we developed uh, with uh, the French Carbon Agri Association, so which represent uh, 300 farmers. And uh, the CO2 avoided for this uh, 300 farmers represent 140,000 tons of CO2 avoided during five years. And we launched a second call uh, this year. And in this call, we have uh, 1,300 uh, 1, farmers involved. And so uh, France Carbon and Agri Association is playing a role, a uh, coordinator role between all the entities, farmers. So we, will we are facilitating the, the implementation of project. The link with project developers or advice company who will support farmers with the ministry for certifying the reduction and with carbon buyers who want to offset uh, their greenhouse gas emissions, their carbon footprint. And so we developed contracts between these uh, different entities to make sure uh, that farmers uh, will be uh, paid for applying their mitigation practices. Next slide. Uh, Yes, it's here. This is uh, so the evolution of the carbon agri, uh, carbon agri methodology. So the first version has been certified in September uh, 2019. This methodology concerns mixed crops and livestock production system with the mitigation practices I presented before. And we are writing a second version of this methodology we will submit to the ministry in October 2021. And this methodology will cover also small remnants over crops monogastric production system, uh, lipids also we can use for reducing enteric, ferment, uh, enteric fermentation, enteric emissions, and uh, biogas production. And next slide. Um, yes, so I, uh, I illustrated the, so the implementation of carbon agri in France, and we are developing now, we will begin, we will launch a, a project in uh, October, 2021, so uh, for six years, so this is a live carbon uh, farming project. And the objective with uh, six countries, uh, Ireland, Belgium, Germany, uh, Spain, Italy, and France, the objective is to uh, build a standard common framework between these six countries in order to implement carbon farming initiatives. And so uh, like in France with the Carbon Agri, Capture, we will develop the tool farm kit, uh, monitoring and reporting standard and engineering tool. And following the, thanks to this common framework, we will develop uh, carbon uh, farming projects in uh, 700 farms in, in Europe. And we will build a reformation cost. We will apply the result-based carbon funding mechanism we are uh, developing in France in order to, to build a, a low carbon network and to help uh, to feed the common framework for the European carbon farming strategy. So uh, next slide. We can say as a conclusion that uh, this is a result-based farming, uh, result carbon farming scheme really interesting in, uh, in livestock and crops production. First, for quantifying and certifying the greenhouse gas emissions in reduction and the carbon sequestration. Uh, we are able, thanks to this uh, mechanism, to develop a transparency accounting and communication. I think this is really important for carbon buyers. And we can support, thank to, thanks to this mechanism, uh, farmers in uh, reducing their greenhouse gas emissions and increasing carbon sequestration. And we think uh, that uh, this, mechanism, this mechanism will boost the low carbon initiative we are developing in France uh, in uh, different production systems. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Baptiste. Um, we now come to the presentation of um, uh, the, the Nathais by Michael Eman. So Michael, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. So we are a private owned company um, in the Southwest of France. Here on the picture, you can see how we plant corn in cover crop 
um, just um, for introduction. So perhaps first slide, please, or the next slide. So we are located in the south of France. I'm on and founder of the company. We are 20 years old. We are a um, European market leader in popcorn. We produce about 57,000 tons of popcorn a year. 200 million bags of microwave popcorn. We are about 140 people. Um, and we work with 250 farmers together in, with, a, with a grower contract every year. And we export mostly in different European countries our products. So myself, I'm also a farmer. Perhaps next slide, please. <clears throat> um, so I was always um, very sensitive for sustainable farming and um, regenerating farming. And we started uh, several years ago to to have an incentives for our farmers to grow cover crops because we were convinced that this is very important for soil fertility um, in long term. And uh, three years ago, we started a program and we thought it's interesting to create really added value for our, for our farmers and for us as a company. And we started a pro program, naturellement.com. It's a six-year program together with um, INRAE, CESBIO, AgroDoc, and STMS. So um, this program um, is mostly first for um, um, converting our farmers to uh, agroecological practices, to put in place a carbon balance, to measure uh, the carbon um, captured every year and in, in the fields. And it's also to really uh, create a natural product or, or make our product as natural as possible. Um, so I don't like, I, I will not develop this uh, part um, in, in details. So for us, it's really important because um, we think that um, measuring the carbon in the soil is really a, hol a holistic approach because it's not only good for the climate, it's very good for the, for the, for the economic, um, in the economic dimension. Uh, it's good for the climate because, it's good for the environment of, because of the climate, it's good for biodiversity, it's good for water quality. It also, it's also good for economic reasons to increase yield and the economic, uh, the economic uh, quality of, um, of, of, of the soil. So it's really a holistic approach and it's a perfect um, way to measure uh, the progress on a farm uh, concerning uh, environmental friendly production. And um, it is a perfect indicator also to communicate on, we think, because uh, it is uh, easy to understand for consumers uh, uh, and it's easy to understand for farmers. And, uh, and everybody is a winner in this, um, in this approach. Next slide, please. So um, the big part of our project is to, <clears throat> to be able to measure the carbon captured every year in the soil and uh, to pay farmers uh, some extra money for this uh, service. And, uh, and then to create added value through our products and, uh, and consumer and customers uh, through this. So we work uh, for this carbon balance together with CESBIO, Centre d'études spatiales de biosphère. I think you, um, people were uh, on this morning um, um, had the technical details on this uh, approach already, so I will concentrate on the business model uh, concerning um, concerning our approach. Um, so it will be really a tool, perhaps next slide please, it will be really a tool to measure uh, the carbon, especially first it measures the, bi the biomass produced per hectare, and with this, we can calculate then the carbon captured in the soil. It will be, it, it's based on the satellite pictures with Sentinel-2. 
Um, so the first approach was together with this bio to, to um, uh, measure um, sam to do samplings uh, in the fields of uh, cover crops and crops and uh, have a comparison with uh, uh, the measurements by a, a satellite and uh, um, says we developed so the algorithm to uh, calculate the carbon carbon footprint um, and the target is that we can measure um, easily uh, for each field um, the carbon footprint every year um, so you can see this is our farm uh, in the in the right corner, uh, you can see the different colors. Um, everything with the green is carbon sink and everything who is uh, a little bit lighter is uh, there was wheat. Uh, there, so there's not so much carbon um, captured. So these are the first results and um, we are very optimistic that we can uh, with a precision uh, 10 to 50 percent um, um, measure the biomass and the carbon uh, captured in each field. So this will be, will be the base to pay our farmers. Next slide, please. Um, this will be enable us uh, to measure the carbon captured. So um, it is basically the same uh, same. Uh, same technical uh, approach than we talked just before. Uh, the, captured, uh, the, the, the carbon is mainly captured by uh, cover crops. So we have, um, we have a summer cover crop of the wheat in general here. And we can also have a winter cover crop because we are in the Southwest with, with faba beans. Together we can capture, uh, farmers can capture up to three to seven metric tons of uh, CO2 per hectare if they, if they have uh, good cover crops in the fields. And this is the main, this is the main um, measurement uh, from our point of view to capture, um, to capture the, the carbon. It's Clear that the soil tillage also has its impact, but it's much uh, the impact is much uh, not so significant as uh, the cover crops. So our our target is really now to promote the uh, the agroecological approach with our farms. We have about on out of our 250 farmers, we have about 40% uh, who are putting in place cover crops. Uh, and we have a group of farmers now about uh, 15 farmers, we have the calculation in place, a precise calculation and they're uh, based on their carbon footprint uh, as a pilot group and uh, in the next year or the year after we will, um, we will then um, have the whole farmer group um, under the same system and the same calculation. Okay, next slide, please. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Oh, yes, please. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, um, yeah, this is uh, it's 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 really a practical approach. We are in the middle of uh, we are just in the moment where we finalize uh, the carbon footprint measurement, and this will be the base for us then to go on the market. Our first approach will be to compensate the carbon of our factory, uh, the uh, the carbon uh, footprint of our factory, and then uh, to create a co a, a, a communication. Uh, um, who will enable us to communicate on the finished product with our product in, the, in, the, in sales and create the added value through our, uh, through our, um, with our customers and consumers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, 
Uh, we now go to uh, McDonald's France with a presentation from Sandy Boudet. So Sandy, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, so my name is Sandy Boudet. Uh, I'm in charge of sustainability part um, through supply chain um, in McDonald's France. Um, so McDonald's France in uh, some key figures. So if you can go to the next slide, please. The next again. Yeah, thank you. So um, it's around 1,500 restaurants, mm -hmm. and we welcome almost 2 million of customers daily. Um, so we um, are... Sorry, if it's good. Yes, uh, no, so the previous one, sorry. Um, so on our seven uh, main supply chain, which are beef, chicken, wheat, potatoes, salad, apple, and tomatoes. Um, we, uh, we, we have uh, more than um, 45,000 farmers uh, who supply them. And main, uh, of, most of them are in France. Um, and so we have uh, around 3,000 uh, farmers under contract um, because so we launched our first contract with farmer more than 30 years ago. And it's because we have this uh, long-term uh, relationship with farmer that we are also able to work um, on long-term um, uh, issues. Um, so next slide, please. So um, we have uh, three pillars um, on quality product when we uh, purchase uh, product um, and we buy products. So it's uh, uh, the quality of the relationship with farmers, as I said, um, through our contracts, uh, because it gives uh, visibility on volumes and price for both um, parties. Um, and also it enables our uh, it enables us to work on a long-term issue as uh, the environment, um, which uh, is our topic today. Uh, and also, um, we have um, high requirements on quality um, aspects uh, of raw material, like on, from, um, on health safety, uh, first of all, but also on a good agricultural practices and also on organoleptic quality. Um, so, which is um, leading our um, purchasing strategy. Next slide, please. Next again. Thank you. Um, so we uh, made uh, our first carbon footprint analysis in 2005 because we needed to better understand uh, what was the impact of our, our activities. So we did it on um, scopes one, two, and three, and we. Um, I've seen that uh, without surprise when we are, have more than 1,500 restaurants that um, so uh, we discovered that um, almost 80% come from um, of uh, our carbon footprint come from uh, supplies and most of them come from the beef and so we decided to um, work with farmers uh, to uh, accompany them on improving their practices. And so we made, um, we organized consultations with farmers, cooperatives, um, advisors, experts, NGOs, and so on, um, to launch uh, our agroecological strategy uh, between 2010 and 2020. Um, in order to reduce uh, GHG emissions, to improve um, our impact on biodiversity and also to improve animal welfare. Um, but we also put a um, plan on restaurant parts, so an er energy plan and also a waste plan. Um, and we set up uh, targets to 2020, 2030, and every three years uh, we make um, uh, an, an update of the carbon footprint um, analysis uh, to follow uh, our progress on all scopes. Um, so we are, are now in 2020 and building um, the, the next strategy on sustainable supply chain uh, parts and also on restaurant with uh, an update of the energy plan and also one on cir circular economy and also one on logistic part. 
Um, so next slide, please. Again. So as I said, we, we made a um, consulta consultation of all uh, stakeholders and we uh, identified um, uh, practices on our supply chains that, um, sorry, uh, that could uh, reduce our impact on environment. We test them on farms um, and we deploy them through our supply chains to 2020 um, with strong uh, relation with uh, our um, agricultural ecosystem. Sorry, so I'm closing, yes. So next slide, please. So with this um, strategy, um, so we um, uh, that we we it enable us to commit farmers on those uh, important issues, and we um, um, achieve some uh, key results that uh, we are happy to share with you um, today. So, for example, on beef. Um, as uh, Jean-Baptiste present the CAP2ER tool. Uh, so we contribute to the development of the tool. And since 2017, 100% uh, uh, of farms under contract are assessed um, with the tool. Um, also, for example, on chicken, um, so we have a non-GM uh, soya beans um, purchase, and um, they are also certified um, deforestation free. So they are um, protea when they come from South America, and for other origins, they are covered by RTRS credits. And also we worked on crop, and for example, um, on wheat, 100% uh, of farms under contract use a decision-making tool to use fertilizers, and they measure nitrogen residues at the end of winter um, for all, um, uh, all wheat uh, produced in France, which are all buns in France. Uh, thank you. So it's uh, some example of, um, of uh, results that uh, we we had during uh, the last 10 years uh, of strategy. And we also had some um, uh, interesting results in on the restaurant part. Um, and because we uh, we update our carbon footprint uh, every three years, we, we are able to share with you uh, the progress we made. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in 2018, we reduce uh, of 10% uh, the food carbon footprint um, of a meal uh, in our restaurant. And we, we are on track to 2020. And that's why we are currently updating our, of, um, our carbon footprint. Um, so as we already set up a target to 2030, and because we um, now uh, need to um, project us uh, to, uh, to 2050, we uh, launch um, a, a work uh, to, um, to 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 set up uh, our roadmap. So we, we read a lot um, uh, of um, studies, and so we made a lot of uh, bibliographic research, and we also had a lot of um, interesting meetings with experts and some of them are here today. So thanks again. Um, and, and also with uh, NGOs and with uh, all actors of our supply chain. And so we identified um, uh, some um, practices um, that we can uh, continue to uh, deploy and uh, to scale up on our supply chain, but also new ones to try, um, and, and they are, which are promising for um, next coming years. Um, and so we, we build a strategy on the agricultural part, but we also um, build another on logistic and restaurants. And so uh, so it's a, a huge uh, common strategy for the brand uh, in France, um, and we are actually uh, reviewing it um, with the internal um, uh, parties. And so we will, after, put uh, put them in um, in sectorial strategies uh, for for our brands. So next slide, please. Um, so 
I'm not able to share with you um, the roadmap um, because um, so we needed to uh, assess uh, assess it to make sure that um, what we plan um, meets expectation um, and because we want to contribute to um, France neutrality to 2050, we wanted to be able to know if um, what we plan uh, fits uh, to these objectives. And so that's why we are um, actually participating to the ongoing uh, test um, of the ACT methodology on the agri-food and agricultural sector. So we, we, the test is just uh, starting now and in uh, several months we would um, be able to know if uh, the roadmap um, um, uh, is enough to contribute to, 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 to France neutrality. Um, but what I ca can say it's on uh, agricultural part. Um, so we already plan to continue to reduce uh, GHG emissions and also to avoid uh, when it's possible them. Um, and what is new for us is that we plan to activate uh, sequestration and so we will put all the strategy in the uh, and all the roadmap in our sustainable supply chain um, strategy 2020-2030, uh, which is uh, which was already uh, also includes sorry uh, a biodiversity and an animal welfare pillar. Next slide, please. Um, and because um, some of practices that we um, we included in the roadmap are new, uh, in particular on sequestration, because we already work on reduction since more than 10 years with farmers under contract. Um, we needed to um, launch pilot projects uh, from 2021 to better understand what, um, what are breaks um, uh, from a technical, social, and economical uh, point of view, and how to lever them and so that's why um, we, we launched those projects and after also to be able to scale up them to all farms under contract and maybe uh, wider. So we, we are building a project on carbon sequestration on uh, the wheat sector. So through uh, planting trees and edges and also through soils. We also uh, lead a project on grassland management. Um, so with uh, uh, INRAE and also with uh, the French Livestock in, in coordination with um, French Livestock Institute and also project, uh, national project uh, led by um, uh, national organization um, in order to identify um, which kind of grassland management can um, stock more carbon. And we also um, have another project, a pilot project on um, uh, eco-design um, files, um, so produced in farms uh, with uh, the certification uh, environmental value, but also uh, on farm which has um, low carbon label project. So it's some example of what we are launching uh, to better understand uh, how those practices um, can be uh, deployed um, on farms. Next slide, please. So it uh, give, give, gives you um, a little overview of what uh, we are working now. Um, but uh, so I wanted to share with you some, um, some, uh, some uh, knowledge and questions that we have. So uh, we had a lot of debate on carbon neutrality um, and if our company was able to, to, to do it. Um, and we decided to, to contribute to France carbon neutrality uh, according to um, uh, debates, national, probably international debate on on on, on that aspect. Uh, we also have a lot of question on carbon accounting rules um, linked to the French low carbon uh, carbon label. Sorry, uh, and also on communication that we are able to do it. So uh, that we are able to do. So we decided to to um, to launch this pro those project and to to learn um, through those projects and also we participate um, to to national discussion but uh, we still have a lot of questions on that part um, and how we can valorize uh, all the work 
uh, uh, done by farmers and also to all stakeholders. Um, and we also wanted to share with you uh, some expectation as, for example, better recognition of the carbon stored uh, in methodology. Um, because uh, so even if it's already stored, we know that um, evolution of uh, um, systems could also have an impact on, on carbon already stored. And so uh, it's really important to take it into account. Um, also, we, we are expecting uh, for um, uh, clarification, evolution, and improvement of um, calculation models, and also uh, um, from tools to be able to uh, um, to 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 have um, a good um, reporting on that aspect uh, of carbon, and maybe some data um, more precise and and which can be um, updated more regularly um, and at a farm level and not only to, to a supply chain. Um, and also this transition um, as um, a big cost, we already spoke about that also. And so um, we, we are uh, looking for the best way to uh, accompany farmers uh, but uh, um, it, we think that it's a common issue um, and so so we have to find common um, uh, levers on that part and to co-finance um, the transition of um, on those practices so thank you everyone We'll come to a, a Q and A session, and I have a question for you. Um, for wheat, do you rely on cooperatives to ensure to ensure you that the farmers use decision making tools, or directly on on farmers, or do you do you? Yes. Uh, so first of all, we identified. So it, the, the example is one of practices that we we decided to choose for our agroecological strategy. We we had other, and so we made um, like almost our own um, uh, scheme, um, and we we asked to cooperatives to to accompany farmers to deploy those practices. And since two thousand and um, eighteen, uh, we decided to um, we asked to farmers to. Um, respect a CRC, which is, um, sorry, I, I have to translate it in English. So crop um, uh, resonated certified. Um, and so it's a national scheme on wheat and we add almost the same um, practices uh, requirement re required and so now um, we benefited from the uh, the GIE CRC um, and uh, and is um, um, also is control but again it's cooperatives who, who accompany farmers okay thank you very much are there any other questions if you have questions please raise your hand and we will um, give you the floor Excuse me, I don't know if it's for me or, or anyone else, but um, we are not able to listen you to how you read. Continue, because we don't understand what you said. Yes, sorry, some, this question was for me. Uh, it was uh, how much will the farmers be paid for the change of practices? How much farmers pay for what? Uh, will be paid for the change of practices. Um, uh, so we we have um, um, a, a specific pocket for those good practices, and we have a, an extra payment for uh, wheat farmers. I hope it uh, answers to the question. Uh, I, I think the question was much uh, how much will they be paid? Will the, this be uh, like 30 euros per uh, uh, ton of uh, carbon stored or something like that? Ah, on, on the carbon sequestration pilot projects? 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, okay. Sorry. Um, so um, the building is not uh, the project. Sorry, is um, is uh, is currently building. So I have not all um, information for you today. Uh, but uh, so we because we really really need to understand what are all um, um, consequences on farm of this kind of practices. Um, so we we have a full. Um, um, uh, we have, we, yes, we, we have a full um, support to farmers, and we will uh, pay for 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 the animation of the of the project, but also for practices and uh, for investment. So we are also looking for a co financement um, for this project. But um, uh, because we really need to understand, um, so we will pay uh, all uh, costs. Okay, thank you, Sandy, for your answer. Uh, there is another question, I think it's for Jean-Baptiste. Uh, what happens uh, if uh, the, uh, in spite of the practices, the amount of emissions avoided uh, are, uh, the, are less than what was expected? Sorry, I'm not sure to understand the question. Uh, I didn't hear what what happens if uh, the, the farmers uh, store less carbon than what uh, okay. expected? So that, that, that depends on the situation. If uh, this is due to climatic conditions, for instance, a drought, and we uh, we so we we don't have the, the, the total amount of CO two sequestrated, sequestrated, uh, so we will have some insurance. But if uh, this is uh, due to uh, the farmers because it uh, it doesn't not apply the mitigation practices. He will have to contribute to uh, pay the uh, supporting cost, uh, the audit, and so this is uh, this is uh, in the contract we have with farmers, and all this situation are described in the contract with farmers between the farmers and the France Carbon Agri Association. Okay, thank you, Jean Baptiste, for the explanation. And there is one last question from Etienne Lapierre. Uh, Etienne, could you explain uh, your question a little more, please? Etienne, the floor is yours. Your mic is, uh, is not functioning yet, Etienne. Uh, you do not have a microphone. <laughs> okay, so Mathieu, uh, can you repeat the question, please? Yes. Um, so the question was, uh, should there be as many exclusive models as there are eligible practices? <laughs> How has to be? I, I can, the question I can... is for the question is for I don't I don't know for okay. So I can try to answer to, to, to the question, and uh, Sandy will be able to complete the, question, the answer, but uh, okay. the if, surprise. If there are no answers for that, <laughs> um, I think that, um, that there was an interesting uh, question from Valentin uh, uh, that, uh, that Michael um, uh, answered directly in the Q&R uh, session. But uh, maybe, uh, I think this is very interesting. Maybe, Michael, you can um, uh, provide a question, the, the, the answer to that question. Uh, in fact, the, the, the estimation for uh, cover crops um, in the study that INRAE published in 2019 was about uh, three, uh, 0 0.33 ton, ton of carbon per hectare per year. And you are uh, mentioning figures uh, Five to ten times higher. Can you can you just uh, for the for the rest of the group explain how you uh, um, you get that um, 
that much uh, um, CO2 captured? Mm. Yes, I, I think uh, I think what is very important. So this is our calculation. We, we can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So I think uh, th this is uh, this is the interest. This is uh, for us. It's very imp important to have a tool to measure the real biomass produced per hectare. Uh, and uh, because if, if you base uh, everything on um, average uh, biomass produced, you will always be on the lower level of, of, uh, of calculation. So the farmer, they have to learn to optimize the cover crop to get high yields of biomass. And if uh, they can do so, if we measure it directly by a tool we are developing, we can come to very high level of, of, uh, of biomass produced by the cover crop. So what we have here is um, we have a sorgo in summertime. It is a um, plant who can produce a lot of biomass if we have the rainfall in summer. And then we have the faba beans in winter and we can have huge quantities of, of cover crop yeah, over the winter time, and we can come up to 10 metric tons of um, of uh, of biomass. Um, and the, our, after our calculation, we come uh, to these results. Uh, so this has to be checked again and so on. But it is it is certainly much more than an average cover crop who is based on I think the calculation for the uh, for the for the for the for the normal calculation. <clears throat> I don't know if it was clear. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. Um, well, I would like to send to to thank all the speakers for from the this afternoon, and um, I would like just to come back to to the initial uh, objective of these two seminars. So, the, as as we told you, they are part of that. Um, a network that we are setting up. So um, we we uh, invite you to join the this uh, SCARF network and to get in touch if you are aware of different groups of farmers and in different initiatives that are um, aiming at reducing uh, greenhouse gas emission and and in particular storing uh, carbon in the soil to to get in touch with Mathieu to get to be part of that uh, uh, network. So this afternoon, what we've seen is that there are uh, very different uh, business models uh, related to how can we um, help that transition and help uh, farmers to really uh, scale out the, the um, uh, carbon storage. Uh, and we've seen that uh, all that is also linked with the MRV and with also policy frameworks like we've seen this morning with the Label Bas Carbone. We've seen the importance of, um, of having blended finance with public finance and also uh, private finance. So we have some examples that are at the moment only um, private finance, like the, the example of Metais. But we have other examples like the Livelihood Project, where uh, there is a blended finance between the region Brittany and also this uh, Livelihood Fund. Uh, so we, we see that there is a, a real need for these uh, blended um, uh, fundings. And, um, and I think that the, the policy has to accompany that through um, uh, um, schemes like the Label Bas Carbone and with uh, uh, something that is uh, very transparent in, in, in terms of monitoring, reporting and verification, but also um, uh, schemes that can help the initial audit of the farms in terms of greenhouse gas emission and on the route to uh, lowering the, the carbon emission and, and on how to uh, store more uh, carbon. So you see there is a, um, a, a lot of stakeholders implicated in those value chains, in those business models, and that this is something that is raising a large interest uh, throughout um, um, the different levels, so public, uh, public, but also private with uh, agro industry, but also insurances, um, banks, and so on are are interested in in the topic, and um, 
I would like to also um, cite what Sandy said concerning the ACT uh, initiative that is led by both uh, ADEM and I4C uh, for um, agro-industry to uh, who are really aiming at reducing their um, emission uh, their emissions through their um, um, through their uh, purchases. And I think that, that all these initiatives together will help uh, um, in the end to, um, to scale up all, all this. And um, I think that um, the different European projects, the one we're, we're talking, the soil carbon farming project um, developed by uh, uh, Climate Kick, but also two other projects that were uh, mentioned this morning and this afternoon, the NEVA project um, aiming at developing new um, CAP um, um, measurements uh, for, for eco, eco schemes with, uh, with um, uh, remote sensing, for instance, but also that live carbon farming uh, project that um, um, Jean-Baptiste Dolé mentioned, which is also something important to have the, the, the buy-in of all the, the stakeholders throughout uh, Europe. So, I will uh, finish that uh, here and, and I will uh, reiterate my, my thanks to all the partners and all the, the, the persons who, who gave a talk this, this afternoon. And thank you all for, for staying so late. Um, we, we were uh, at a peak with 71 uh, participants and, and uh, we're still 58, uh, although we're a bit late. So thank you very much for staying there and we'll be back to you. Don't hesitate to get in touch uh, with us uh, after the after the webinar, if you have any other questions or if you want to be put in in, in contact with the with some of the the speakers, thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>